the ruins of a Palestinian refugee camp on the outskirts of Beirut. Shattered buildings, broken bodies. This is the horrific aftermath of the Beirut massacre, when several hundred defenseless Palestinians were brutally murdered. The immensity of the crime shocked the world. The refugee camps of Sabra and Shatila offered the softest of targets. A short time before, Israel forced the fighting men of the Palestine Liberation Organization to quit Lebanon. This left the refugees helpless when the killers came. The killers, members of a Lebanese rightist militia, got away as easily as they had arrived. To do so, they had to pass through Israeli lines and the extent of Israeli collusion in the massacre has caused a political storm. Yasser Arafat, the PLO leader driven out by the Israelis, has been organizing protests from exile. In Damascus, he accused Israel of first grossly violating the withdrawal agreement by occupying parts of West Beirut. Then, he says, they organized the massacre for which the Americans, too, must share the blame. Defense Minister Sharon admits his troops allowed Lebanese militiamen into the camp, allegedly in search of terrorists. But the question remains, why did the Israelis not intervene when the killing of civilians began? And the moment we heard about it, we did everything, including shooting the souls and out of this area. And since then, they are not here. And we said them that if they will even approach close to this area, they will have to fight us. That's the Israeli claim. But could they have acted more quickly? And who did the actual killing? That survivor is in no doubt. She says it was Major Haddad, the Lebanese rightist who, with Israeli money and arms, fought the PLO for years in southern Lebanon. He joined the Israelis in the taking of a PLO stronghold Haddad has admitted he was killed yeah, 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 yeah. aboard an Israeli helicopter yeah, yeah, yeah. on Friday when most of the yeah, yeah, yeah. were yeah, yeah. But he denies his men were involved. I can say and, and confirm that these accusations are not true 100%, and we didn't participate in any way in this horrible massacre that we condemn and we reject and it is these actions are not from our custom of uh, of, beha of behaving Israel claims the killing was done by gunmen from the Christian phalangist party the phalangists have denied it but it does seem certain that the killers were Christians and Israel allowed them to go in to mop up remaining Palestinian fighters. And that, say Israel's critics, was a staggering error of judgment, especially after the killing only a few days earlier of the Christian Maronite leader Bashir Jamal, the new president-elect of Lebanon. Jamal died in a massive explosion at his party office. Again, no one claimed responsibility, though in turn Syrians, Israelis, the PLO, and dissident rightists were suspected. It was a reflection of the number of enemies Bashir Jamal had made on his way to the top. <laughs> This was Bashir in typical form, smartly dressed, forceful and inspiring confidence in support. He commanded a militia of 25,000 men fought in turn against Syrians, Palestinians and rival Christian factions. He was supplied with Israeli arms, but he insisted Israel was not his master. All foreigners must get out of Lebanon, he said. 
The Falange Party was founded 43 years ago by Bashir's father, Pierre Jamal, now aged 77. He is a former Lebanese president, post traditionally filled by a Maronite Christian, while the prime minister is always a Sunni Muslim. Ever since independence from France in 1943, Pierre has fought to preserve the Maronites' dominant role. The Jamiles have had their share of power, but they've also suffered. This was the funeral in 1980 of Bashir's young daughter. She died when shots were fired at the Jamiles' car. Bashir himself was the intended victim. Six months earlier, there was a bomb attack on Amin Jamal, elder brother of Bashir. He escaped with minor cuts. That incident followed factional clashes between Falangists and the National Liberal Party. Amin Jamal has now taken on the responsibility of the presidency. He is seeking international help to help restore government control over the whole country. We uh, have many contacts, the government, Lebanese government, has many contacts with the United States and the other lands of Lebanon to obtain this quick withdrawal and uh, the Lebanese army will be able, uh, based on a national consensus, will be able to obtain uh, the real, to, to reach the real control of the uh, Lebanese territory itself and directly. President Reagan agreed. Foreign forces and armed factions have too long obstructed the legitimate role of the government of Lebanon's security forces. We must pave the way for withdrawal of foreign forces. The first step to help Lebanon escape from an apparently unending state of chaos is the revival of an international peacekeeping force. American, French, and Italian units are returning to take up positions in Beirut. This time, there is enormous international pressure for them to remain in the city until all the Israeli forces have pulled back. With the benefit of hindsight, it's clear that the tragedy of the massacre would not have happened if the previous international force had stayed. Peacekeeping forces could be here for some time. The final goal of the Amin Jamal government is the withdrawal of all Syrians and Israelis, which could mean lengthy negotiations. Israeli troops began pulling out of West Beirut soon after President Reagan called on them to do so, taking with them huge loads of confiscated weapons. They've also taken thousands of prisoners who are sent to prison camps in the south of Lebanon. A complete Israeli withdrawal inside its own borders seems unlikely in the immediate future. The behavior of the Israeli troops in relation to the Beirut massacre created a political crisis back in Israel. There had been alarm in some quarters when Israeli forces raced up to the gates of Beirut over three months earlier. Now the conflicting reports about the extent of Israeli collusion in the Beirut massacre brought the Israeli parliament out of recess for an emergency meeting. The explanations by Defense Minister Ariel Sharon brought cries of protest from the public gallery. According to Sharon, the Palestinian camp complex had remained a terrorist stronghold. The Lebanese militiamen would seek out terrorists, but were told not to harm women, children, or the elderly. The tragedy, said Sharon, was beyond the Israelis' control, and Israel was in no way responsible. One government minister and the West Bank administrator resigned over the affair. And Israel's president, Yitzhak Navon, called openly for a special inquiry. But the Begin government won the crucial votes, although it eventually promised to hold some kind of investigation. Meanwhile, 40-year-old Amin Jamal attempts the mammoth task of creating a new Lebanon from out of the room. Perhaps the sheer horror of the Beirut massacre expected to run into four figures will convince all parties and factions that the fighting had to stop. These could have been Amin's feelings in one of his first acts as president, laying a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soul. He was elected president by a unanimous vote, unlike his brother, whose candidature was boycotted by the Muslim deputy. Now, both at home and abroad, Amen Jamal will need all the support he can find.